Welcome friends! That is welcome friends! In the last video we made this, a rocket stove power unit. In this video we're going to be using a load of junk and making a really nice barbecue griddle. Hi I'm Bongo, if you're a subscriber you're going to enjoy this video. If we're just meeting for the first time, this channel Flowering Elbow is all about upcycling, making, hacking, all that cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. Let's get stuck into this project. So I've no idea if this is going to work. We've got an old radiator, some angle iron here, some old bits and bobs. Let's see if we can make something here. Orange. If this is going to be our hot plate griddle, we obviously don't want even a hint of paint left on it for cooking food. The plan here with this double radiator is to have the flue gas pass between the two skins. So not actually in the pipe bits of the radiator where the central heating water once flowed. That might have seemed the obvious choice but the volume of air that can pass through those small tubes is way too small especially at such low pressures. When I was scrounging around and thinking about what scrap metal I could use to make this hot plate I did the calculation to find out the gap that would have to be between the top and the bottom of the hot plate given the diameter of the flue pipe that we have on the rocket stove. Turns out that the gap between the leaves of your standard double radiator is about bang on. To say removing the paint from the top of this was tedious would be a bit of an understatement and it totally needs a good dust mask and face shield. So I'm only halfway through and I'm taking a break from that to make this fit up to the rocket stove power unit. Now to cut the steel of the radiator I'm using these thin <coughs> slitting discs on the 4 inch angle grinder. They wear down quickly enough and I went through quite a few of them but I'm not sure how else you'd do it and it works fairly well anyway. I have limited experience with a plasma cutter for example but I'm not sure how that would deal with the ribs of the radiator. Any radiator or plasma experts out there do let us know in the comments. By cutting just through the outer ribs of that bottom leaf of the radiator I was able to fit it up to the barrel like this. Pretty sturdy. Let's have a little break from the radiator itself and prepare some of this scrap angle iron. Let's finish off that griddle top once and for all. My friend Hal was round and wanted to have a crack at it, so here he is. He's got his own special wiggly woggly technique, we call it, with the flap disc and angle grinder there. Getting into the grooves is the tricky bit. We found that using the wire wheel with the drill was the best way to really finish those off. Oh dear. Oh dear, that's not standing good at all. So Howard was being good, he had his visor respirator thing on so he couldn't smell the awful smell. I smelt it from in here and went and stopped him, uh, but I think it's a bit too late. It's such a distinctive smell, that smell of the insulation of the magnet wire in the windings of the motor now things. It's not good. Now we've got our holes for the flues, we need something to stop the combustion gases just spewing out the sides and uh, rather be channeled up those two holes. I don't think we need to be too meticulous on this um, as the paint is making interesting effects and lots of nasty smoke, it's just as well. We'll be relying on the gases irresistible urge to go upwards mainly. We'll see how it works out in practice but my hope is with the flue pipes on there as well it shouldn't, the smoke that is, shouldn't want to bother coming out the sides much. Now I know what you're thinking, 
why is there any paint on there anyway if I'm trying to weld it? And the answer is it's very difficult to get all of it off. It's quite nook and cranny-ish. This is always the tricky bit with upcycled materials and it definitely makes welding more of a challenge. It becomes an art of effective compromising where you could basically spend indefinite time prepping materials and getting them all sorted without a sandblaster especially. I would love to hear your tips on weld prepping in a speedy effective manner. Please do connect and leave them in the comments below. Now using angle iron as a spacer between the leaves of the radiator has some advantages and disadvantages. It's great in that it fills the gap that it needs to when you orient it like this. It has a big tolerance in the sort of distance it will cover. The downside, well that's the corners and they were always just going to be quite tricky with the shape of the radiator being what it is. Again we're relying on the inexorable upwards movement of the smoke. To make this Frankenstein monstrosity somewhat mobile, I want to be able to remove the flue pipes. What we can try here is using these just to sort of locate them in place and stop them wobbling around and falling off. The flue pipes themselves came from next door's roof when a ginormous tree fell down on it and you can check out that video and the milling up of that tree here. For now I'm just using the flue pipe itself to kind of locate these bits of angle iron so they'll retain it. The trick here is going to be getting them to grip it tightly enough but loosely enough that I can get it in and out. A little bit of reinforcement on the inside here not only makes it stronger, it's going to pull those angle iron bits into the centre a little bit and make it slightly tighter. Object. <laughs> Here it is after that first barbecue. I'm pretty damn pleased. Everyone seemed to like quite enjoy it. Uh, it was a, a real kind of conversation piece and, and it just worked. It worked great. It, the food was cooked. You can see the zones of heat on here. So super hot towards the middle going cooler towards the outside but still reasonably hot. So it was like really cool to line the sausages up along this area once they were cooked and have this bit for like intense heat, medium heat around the sort of perimeter of that. So it's well on its way to being seasoned. These top bits of the griddle here is not even oily at all or greasy. So that tells me the oil's kind of baked on in a good way. Um, and it's collected a bit in the channels, so they might need some wiping down. I did cook an epic amount of food there were over 20 of us at the barbecue and it worked great for it and everyone had a feast. Friends, thank you so much for joining me once again. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, then check that out. There's a load of juicy details about firing up and fabricating the upcycled burn unit for this rocket stove. If you're thinking about making your own, it's definitely worth a look. Apart from that, do us a favour and give this video a thumbs up. And I hope to see you in the next one.